fully made and fearfully made, I resemble God. Wow, that's a powerful statement. Glory be to the Father, who made all his creation beautiful, so be uplifted in your spirit. The purpose of this video is to look at historical accounts and literature describing the type of hair commonly associated with people of African descent, also known as woody hair. I will highlight pieces of documented history describing woody hair in antiquity, Jacob, also known as Israel's hair, and biblical records. What is woody hair? In 2019, the Trichological Society dedicated to orthodox hair science describes woody hair as implying a benign condition best described as normal hair with tight curl, which is sometimes frizzy, resembling negroid hair. So basically, if you have negroid phenotype, that is to say, if you look like a black person, then woody hair is the norm. Otherwise, it is a medical condition. But that's in modern days. What was woody hair way back in the days? I'll take you on a journey back in time through history to discover what was woody hair back then. For this purpose, we will look into the work of a Greek historian, Diodorus of Sicily, who was writing in the first century before Christ. He provides a description of Ethiopian in volume 2 of his book, Diodorus of Sicily. As we know, Ethiopian Greek means burned faces, that is to say, very dark-skinned people. Diodorus observes that there are also a great many other tribes of the Ethiopians, some of them dwelling in the land lying on both banks of the Nile and on the islands in the river, others inhabiting the neighboring country of Arabia and still others residing in the interior of Libya. The majority of them, and especially those who dwell along the river, that is to say the river Nile, are black in color and have flat noses and woody hair. We see here that Ethiopians encompasses a large group of black-skinned people with woody hair, which are found all the way from the Middle East to beyond the Nile River deep into Africa. In this historical account by Diodorus and also in antiquity in general, Ethiopia was not limited to the modern day, present day country of Ethiopia, which is currently located in East Africa. That particular country was actually called Abyssinia all the way until the 4th century when it was renamed Ethiopia by King Ezana. Even in the past millennium, Ethiopia referred to various locations where dark-skinned people dwelt, primarily in Africa. As we can see here on the 1554 map of Africa by Munster Sebastian, which shows Libya and Ethiopia in West Africa. It means that a person in modern-day Mali would have been called Libyan in 1554. Whereas a, per whereas a person in modern-day Niger or Nigeria would have been called Ethiopian in 1554. Keep that in mind when you hear Ethiopia that is simply referred to a black person or the land where black people dwell. Let's fast forward now to 1710 and on this particular map of Africa by Mo Herman. Ethiopia is in the central part of Africa, so it has migrated from West Africa to the central part of Africa within the span of two years, I'm sorry, 200 years. In the, on this particular map, Ethiopia actually encompasses Congo, Gabon, Cameroon, Central Africa, and many other African countries. If you had woody hair, like an Ethiopian, at this point in time, you were considered to have hair like a West African, or Central African, that is to say, a Bantu ethnic group type of African. Here we can see that according to Merriam-Webster dictionary, to ancient Greeks and in archaic language, Ethiopian is simply a black person living far to the south. So when you hear Ethiopian, again, keep that in mind because that's really important to remember. Ethiopian only referred to a black person. 
Let's go even further in time to see how far back we can trace Ethiopian or black people's hair being associated with wool. Let's look into the histories, work of 4th century BC Greek writer Herodotus, who is known as the father of history. Let's see what he has to say about woody hair. On page 236 of Herodotus Histories, book volume 7, he writes, Of the Ethiopians above Egypt, and of the Arabians, the commander, I say, was Arsamis. But the Ethiopians from the direction of the sun rising, for the Ethiopians were in two bodies, had been appointed to serve with the Indians, being in no way different from the other Ethiopians, but in their language and in the nature of their hair only. Listen carefully now. For the Ethiopians from the east, that is to say in India, black people in India, are straight-haired. But those of Libya, that is to say those living in Africa, have hair more thick and woody than that of any other man. Let's keep a timeline record because, I mean, that's really important to where I'm going to take you next. In the 4th century BC, with Herodotus, Ethiopian was associated with living in Libya, that is to say living in Africa, and having hair more thick and woody than any other man. In the 1st century BC, with Diodorus, just about a hundred years before Christ, Ethiopian was also associated with living in Libya, that is to say living in Africa, but also with black skin complexion and also woody hair. How about Jacob, the patriarch of Israel? There is an ancient manuscript called Joseph and Asenef that describes the, the texture of his hair. In 1985, theologian scholar Dr. Christoph Burkhardt states that every competent scholar has affirmed, and I quote, that Joseph and Asnef, this manuscript, is Jewish in its origin. None has put the book much after 200 after Christ, and some have placed it as early as the second century before Christ. In this book we read, And they came to Jacob, and Israel was sitting on his bed, and he was an old man in comfortable old age. And Asnef saw him, and was amazed at his beauty, because Jacob was exceedingly beautiful to look at, and his old age was like the youth of a handsome young man, and his head was all white as snow. And the hairs of his head were all exceedingly close and thick, like those of an Ethiopian. Let's read another translation of that account, and that's from the book of Lawrence M. Wills, called Ancient Jewish Novels. A quick recap here. Asnef is the Egyptian wife of Joseph, and we can read that in Genesis chapter 41, verse 45. And here we have another account of her about to meet her father-in-law, that's Jacob. Come with me, said Joseph, and you will meet my father. As Joseph and Asnef arrived in the land of Goshen to see Jacob, Joseph's brother met them there and prostrated themselves before them. When they entered to meet Jacob, he was sitting on his bed, an elderly man in his golden age. When she saw Jacob, Asnef was struck by his beauty, for Jacob was very handsome, and indeed still looked like a handsome young man. His hair was white as snow, yet still thick and full like an Ethiopian. To the right of your screen, you have a depiction of Joseph and Jacob. Based on what you've just read, you decide what he might have looked like.
Let's look into the work of Cornelius Tacitus, born in the year 56 and died in the year 120 after Christ. He was a Roman Empire senator and historian. In the history of Tacitus, he writes, Some say that the Jews were fugitives from the island of Crete, who settled on the nearest coast of Africa. Many, again, say that they were a race of Ethiopian origin, who in the time of King Cephas were driven by fear and hatred of the neighbors to seek a new dwelling place. What about Messiah's hair? The year is 96 after Christ. John the Revelator is on the island of Patmos in Greece. He would have heard perhaps of his other great counterpart, so to speak, Herodotus and Diodorus of Sicily, who equated woolly hair with black skin or Ethiopian. Therefore, he would have been very careful with the choice of words here. And he writes in the book of Revelation, according to the vision that he receives, in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14, he describes Jesus and he says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. John 14, verse 8 to 9, He who has seen the Son has seen the Father. And we can read and recount the description of the father's hair in the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9, where he writes, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days, that the Holy Father himself, did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. Let's build our chronological timeline again here. So we have 6th century before Christ, Prophet Daniel describes the Holy Father himself with hair like the pure wool. Then we have 4th century before Christ, Herodotus describing Ethiopian hair more thick and woody than any other man and people living in Africa or Libya. Right? Then we have 1st century before Christ, Diodorus of Sicily. Describing Ethiopian hair as woody hair, African people, people black in color. Then we have in the first century before Christ, a manuscript pops out written by Hebrews, Joseph and Asneth, which, which describes Jacob as having hair exceedingly thick and full, like an Ethiopian. Then we have 96 years after Christ, John on the island, on the island of Patmos, describing having seen the son of man's hair being white like wool and has feet like burnt brass. Then we have 106 years after, after Christ, we have Cornelius Tacitus, the Roman senator, describing that many say the Jews are a race of Ethiopians. There is a correlation here. And we have in 1819, William Lawrence, who says that the Congo Negroes in the blackness of their skin and woody hair equal any race of Africans. When we consider how large an extent of Africa is occupied by the black woody haired Negro. For all this to say, don't remove the kings from your hair, remove them from your brain. Your hair is a blessing. Your hair is gorgeous. Your hair is excellent. Your hair is fantastic. Your hair is marvelous. Teach that to your children, teach that to your daughters, to your sons, to your sisters, to your brothers. Let's <laughs>